We interrupt our program to bring you this important message. You are listening to The Underground Marketing Conspiracy, a secret ritual where entrepreneurs acquire highly classified and confidential business knowledge that the top 1% of income earners don't want you to know. And now, your host, Matty Milligan. What is going on, my fellow conspirator and conspirators? Welcome to The Underground Marketing Conspiracy. Woo. So I had this question today from my buddy Dom. Dom, what is up, buddy? <laughs> and he wants to know how to start a podcast. And he actually recorded his first episode. And I want to congratulate him on that because I would say that 98% of people, they want to create something, whether it's a podcast, a YouTube channel, maybe they want to do Facebook Lives every single day. Maybe they even want to just put themselves out there on TikTok they're probably not going to even get started. So mad respect to Dom. He's a super young guy, super intelligent as well. I've, I've seen him and he's very, very teachable. And I'm sure he's going to be successful long term. And he just needs to stick to it. And the fact that he's started is he's on the right track. So I'm just going to give him some tips in this episode. And if you're listening to this and you want to start a podcast too, this is going to be very, very, very beneficial for you. So first thing I would say is, how did I come up with the title, The Underground Marketing Conspiracy? So I wanted it to be sound very like secretive and exclusive and very clandestine, something where you weren't going to get, you knew that it was going to be different from everything else. So a couple of my favorite books, Dot Com Secrets, Expert Secrets, the subtitle for those is The Underground Playbook for dot, dot, dot. There's a few other books that have that, right? It's like Dot Com Secrets, The Underground playbook for massively exploding your company online or something like that. Something very close to that. It's not it, but it's very similar. So I'm like, okay, I want underground. I've always been a fan of underground hip hop as well growing up. Not at this point. I don't like mainstream hip hop whatsoever. I just think it's utter garbage, especially this trap and or not necessarily trap, but just mumble rap that I hear these days. But underground was always a cool word that I really liked. So I had that. And then marketing because I'm, I want this to be a business-based podcast. I feel marketing is the most important part of your business. Nothing happens in your business without a sale. But in order to get that sale, you really have to promote yourself, promote your products, your services to get that conversation going and then eventually get that conversion. And then conspiracy, again, I've been into conspiracy theories for a really long time. My brother is really into them. And sometimes I like to tease him because, and be very sarcastic because he gets really into it. And I'm always like, dude, like, as I've talked about before on the show, if you want to start your own secret society, like do that. In fact, I'm just going to create my own podcast and build a secret society through my own podcast called the underground marketing conspiracy. So that's what I, I, I would recommend doing. If it's in, what I would do is I would go on Amazon and look for titles for some bestsellers and use their subtitles as something similar to the catch line you're going to have for their phrase, or maybe even just find a few of those keywords and then piece them together, right? Come up with four or five different combinations of words of maybe I would say no more than six or seven words total. And then dude, shoot me a message on Facebook and be like, all right, so here's what I've honed it down to these, these four or five. So here's what it is, dude. Like, which one do you think is best? And I'll probably give you a couple of them. I'll be like, this one I like the most, this one the second most. Which one do you think? And you're probably like, yeah, I was thinking that too, because that's usually how these things happen. It's like, all right, sweet. Now for the subtitle, this is where your copywriting and wordsmithing skills will need to come in place. Amazon, awesome place to check it out. All their titles for books. Take some of the parts that you really like from those. Go on to iTunes and Spotify and even all those other podcasting sites and look at some of the titles from from podcast and their subtitles and listen to their introductions and figure th- see what they're doing and probably have a different or something similar again it needs to be catchy right there needs to be a secondary main unique pr- value proposition for your show mine is a secret ritual where entrepreneurs acquire highly classified and confidential business knowledge that the top 1% of income earners don't want you to know And again, that fits with the underground marketing conspiracy. Like it sounds like that, doesn't it? So your subtitle needs to correlate and be a more expanded version of the main title. It needs to describe the main title. I talk about this a lot in copywriting, right? There's your headline, which is the the main concept, but then there's the lead, which is the three or four sentences after. So think of your podcast title as the headline and then your subtitle for the podcast as the lead. All right, so now you have that subtitle. 
what I would do is I would get someone to just introduce you and hire a voiceover actor. I went on Fiverr. I hired some dude for like 20 bucks. I was like, hey man, can you record? This is like, yes, I can totally do that for you, Maddie. And I was like, sweet dude, here you go. Two or three days later, I had the audio file. It was a very good experience. I recommend Fiverr. They want to make you happy. So always make sure they have revisions. But even if they don't, they're probably just going to give you the revisions anyways. If, so you give them a five-star view and so they can get more gigs on Fiverr, which is great. The gig economy is super sweet. Now that you have that audio file, what are you going to do? So for all of my mixing, I record everything in Audacity. Originally, what I was doing for for the videos, though, and this is embarrassing, is I was recording on my phone with my Rode Lavalier mic, and then I would upload that to YouTube, then download the audio file from from YouTube. So I had to upload it twice, once to YouTube, once to Libsyn. I'm like, I'm not doing that ever again, unless there's an interview where I'm going to upload it to a, like, I'm going to upload the video version to YouTube. I'm going to upload the video version to Facebook, maybe even LinkedIn, and just show people the different interviews that I have. And that's, that's all that I really did for, for recording those. But now I just, I bought a microphone. I invest a couple hundred bucks in this blue mic, this blue Yeti microphone, very good microphone very high quality. It takes a little bit of time to figure out how everything works. If you haven't used a microphone before, I was actually speaking with someone the other day and he was like, Oh, do you have like a condenser or a diffuser mic? I think the other one was called. I'm like, I have, I have no clue. (laughs) Like I know I'm very technical, but I'm more of a software guy, not necessarily a hardware guy. (laughs) So This mic for me has been absolutely great. You need to have some like Joe Rogan set up where you have a whole studio and this very sweet couple thousand dollar mic with a boom. You can have that eventually like I plan to do. But when you're just starting out, just start recording on your phone even. I've seen Russell Brunson do this a lot. I've seen Gary Vaynerchuk do this a lot. They just record into their phone and then give it to their team and they, they handle everything else, all the technical stuff. So just start recording every single day. That's really how you're gonna find your voice. So that's what I use for the mic. I... I'll record in Audacity on my desktop on my Mac. So I have a MacBook Pro. I just record it on Audacity like I am right now. And then I take that, export the MP3 file. Then I have this template I've created in GarageBand. And this is where I found some royalty-free sound effects. These kind of these kind of tuning in sounds. And then this guy who was like, we interrupt this broadcast from brief important message or very important message and then that's when once that ends then i mix in the voiceover dude with the introduction he introduces me then that uh, the file that i have for the that specific episode i add that and then i make it so that the the audio kind of goes down in volume as he introduces me and then towards the end i have it come back up in terms of the music the audio file i forgot to talk about i just bought us this i spent fifty dollars on a song on premiumbeats.com so i went to premium beats and listened to about 30 different tracks found one was like okay this one sounds creepy all right cool and then again i i got some feedback i went to my mom and i'm like hey mom listen to this this intro like what what vibe do you get she's like it sounds kind of creepy and i'm like yes awesome and i'm like what about this intro voiceover guy she's like he also sounds creepy. I'm like, cool. Like, let's play them together. What does it sound like? She's like, this sounds very creepy and weird. And I'm like, yes, perfect. Okay, that's that's what I'm going for. Awesome. All right, so take all those, make your audio file in GarageBand like I do. I'm sure there's other software you can find out there, but that's just what I use. Then I export that as an MP3 player, highest quality possible. And then what I do is I use Libsyn for all the uploading of the files. Libsyn is basically this RSS feed. You upload your you upload everything into Libsyn. You're the one audio, the final audio file, and then you can just shoot it to all the other different audio podcasting. So you're not manually doing it, right? You're not manually uploading it to iTunes and then Spotify and then Google Play and Google Podcasts and YouTube and LinkedIn and Twitter and radio.com and Deezer. All of those, you just load and upload into Libsyn and then go through this process. Then I'll tell you the last step to publishing. But in Libsyn, a couple steps you need to do. So in there, you're going to upload the file. That's the first step. Second step, you need to add the title, the description, then add, I would say, five to ten different tags to the episode. At the very bottom, of, you're going to notice there's this little box that says IDV3. So you want to tick that off. 
make sure that you tick those off because that way when you publish it to all those other ones, it's going to use those tags that you you that you added to all the different platforms. When and then that'll help you in terms of SEO in those search engine optimization in those specific platforms where it's it's sent that file to. And then you're going to add the the cover art for that episode. So I use Canva. I created this template. I spent a dollar on this funnel icon and then I took this eyeball, put it in the middle and I'm like, this looks super sweet. It looks like this Illuminati symbol, but as a funnel. And I thought it was funny. And so I'm like, cool, this is the logo for the show. Done. Didn't go out and even hire a designer on Fiverr because I remember at the time I'm like, oh, I'm just going to... I'm going to, whatever, I'm just going to do it myself. So that's what I did. I think that way when I outsource it to people in the future, they can do a way better job than I did. But that's what, just what I did. Again, added the title to the the thumbnail and then added the the a little image that I had of myself, like kind of going like, shh, like looking again, very secret society-like. And then I just added this, the title there. You need to create a, a wide version and a rectangular bit version libsyn will show you the exact dimensions so all you need to do is type those into canva which is free and you can create those manually and then that way you have a template so every time you just create a new episode you just need to change the title of of that specific episode and if you don't even want to do that just t- create one for each of those or you don't even have to i think you can there's a section in libsyn where you can just add the different versions and it'll just use those by default but i like to change it for each episode just in case the the image files and keywords do rank eventually for each of those episodes. That's why I like to do that. Then you need to, for the description, you'll need to change it. You'll need to manually add it for the social, different social ones, Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter. Twitter needs to be 256 characters or less in terms of the length. And then the next step after that is the scheduling. So you can actually choose to schedule it at a specific time if you want to. You can even then choose to schedule it at different times and you can actually have it a temporary release. So it's like this episode will only exist for two days and then it's gone forever. So if you want to automatically unpublish it, you can do some crazy stuff in there. I just publish it once and schedule it. And then the last step is is actually publishing it. Now, if you're smart, what you'll do is you'll sit down, instead of recording one every single day, you might want to sit down just once per week, like I did and plan to do in the future, and just bulk record five to seven to ten different episodes in one go. Then that way you're just doing everything in one go, uploading them, creating all the other episodes at the same time, and then scheduling it. And that way you can automatically have content just being released every single day, which is absolutely awesome. And that's really all that you need to do. In terms of ideas for the episode, I would really just go into, I mean, you're in a couple of the marketing groups I'm into, like go in there, look at this questions people are asking about specific topics and the answer would be like, Hey, so-and-so asked this question. So what I did is I did a little bit of research and found some different answers for him. Right. And the more and more you do this over time, the better you're going to get. If you go back and listen to my first episode, I am so, so bad because those were I created, I think 10 episodes and then bailed on it for a year and a half. And then this past September, I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to do this. I'm just going to, I was like, Oh, I want to create a show. Maybe I'll create a new one. And then I'm like, no, dude, just go back to that concept like that. I liked the concept myself. I thought it was funny and weird and kind of fit my personality. So I just took it and, and went with it. I've tried to record an episode this year so far. What is it? The 21st of January. I've recorded an episode every single day so far. So three weeks straight, every single day, which is amazing. And I plan to release an episode every single day until the end of time. Maybe at some point I'll stop this show and create another one, but I don't know. I, I, I really enjoy this show, to be honest. So it's just, I can speak and really just say whatever I want. And yeah, it's something I look forward to, honestly, every single day. So for the content ideas though, dude, just like whatever, find the topics that are related to the big idea for the show and then just cover those every day. Maybe, as I said, have people who ask you questions. Same way you asked me the question, we're like, hey man, like, what would you do for a podcast? And I'm like, cool, man. Like, let me just answer that in an episode because that's going to be a lot more beneficial for you. So that's really all the steps that you need to do. And if you're, if you are listening to this and you want to start that, the biggest step is getting outside of your head and just getting started. So be like Dom and just take action, right? He's a very young, smart dude, as I said. So 
he doesn't he honestly doesn't know better oh people if they're if they're a little bit older they're going to have more compunction and they're not going to want to do that they're going to be afraid more and more you what people think but this guy's very highly motivated i've noticed he's always interacting in the same groups i am and anytime he wants help i see him as like an apprentice where i'm like i need to help this kid like he you know i feel obligated to be like dude like when i was your age i didn't have like the confidence and i didn't have like the know-how and to just take action so dude like the fact that you've taken action mad respect at this point just keep going and and yeah use a lot of the information listen to this episode a few times if you need to hope you enjoyed today's episode of the underground marketing conspiracy if you did i want you to consider subscribing consider leaving a review and yeah i'm talking to you dom i want you to leave a review on itunes <laughs> and if, if you want to find out more about me or maybe you actually have a question yourself you can send them to underground marketing conspiracy at gmail.com my name is maddie milligan you can find out more about me by visiting maddiemilligan.com and i will see you next time on another episode of the underground marketing conspiracy Woo.